Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new Let's Play by Colorful Artie. This is the Bugs Life action game. So I'm, be I'm guessing none of you expected me to play this. So, uh, for those of you who've been with my channel for a while, you'll know I did the Toy Story 2 action game, like, several years ago, and that was fun. And that's a pretty good game. This is not, really. <laughs> this is a game that has a, a lot of problems and is honestly considered to be not very good at all. But I'm still playing it because I have a lot of nostalgia for it and I really enjoyed it, uh, playing it when I was a kid. So we're, we're going to try reliving some of that nostalgia. And just to make it even more painful, I'm going to try getting 100% in this game, which I've never done before. Yeah! So... Yeah, this is basically a 3D platformer. It was released for the PC, which is the version I'm playing on, but it was also released for the N64 and the PlayStation 1. And there are subtle differences between the three, but this is the one I could get to work. So, we're doing this one. <laughs> this is also the one where you can gather movie clips, much like the Toy Story 2 action game. The main collectible in this are clips from the movie A Bug's Life. So basically, throughout this Let's Play, if I get 100%, you'll be able to see pretty much the whole movie. Yeah, just at lower resolution, and in weird orders. <laughs> um, you can load and save your game, pretty normal, and then we've got options here. It's Ploco! So, Tuck and Roll, aka the original Minions, are here to help you with options. You can change your controls, but I already have my controls set. You can change the music and sound effect volume, or mess with the graphic options. I already did all this beforehand. So, nothing there! Let's start the first level. So, the anthill is the first true level of the game, but you're gonna want to go for training because, hey, the training counts towards your 100%. Yeah, let's do it. I'll also try not to mo Oh, wow. <laughs> I was about to say, I'll try not to mock the game too much, but... Oh, man. Worse graphics than I expected. So, uh, Mr. Soil is here to give us a training level with this amazing 2D low res image of all of these ants just standing there uh, staring at us. This is gonna be great. Let's start. Yeah. Well, hello there, Flick. Oh. I learned a long oh. time ago that the ant's most basic line of defense is your berry throw. Heave a few around by hitting your throw button. Go on, my boy. Give it a go. Okay, well, starting off is way worse graphics than I remember this game having, which... I mean that's gonna happen. Uh, when I w <laughs> when I first played this game, I hadn't I we didn't own an N64 or any other game system, so this was revolutionary at the time. There is like no texture anywhere, very low resolution. Draw distance is terrible. There's no music. Why is there no music on the training level? That is the one thing. Okay, this game has a lot of problems, but one of its real shining, like one of its real saving graces, is it has a really good soundtrack. Like the levels have really good music. I guess we don't get to experience that today. So yeah, the training level is this little like arena area here. Or we get to learn about all the different controls in the game, or at least most of them. So to start, this is our main way of attacking. We can throw berries. That is... Um, what? Did it reset my controls? It totally reset my controls. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, going back to this, now we actually have it all set. So our main method of attacking in the game is throwing berries. So you'll start... There, Berries are your main method of attack. You can toss them. They kind of sort of home in on enemies, but not really. And they basically give you a ranged attack. They're really weak, but you can use these to take out enemies at a distance, which is nice. You can also upgrade your berries. So right now, you'll start every single level with just the red berry, which is the worst one. But you can find berry upgrades, which make you do more damage. Now, Flick, there are a lot of places to explore. But you can't run anywhere you want willy-nilly. Sometimes you have to jump. Go on, <laughs> hop around a bit. <laughs> but, well, Flick, this is a 3D platformer game, which means you're going to need to jump. Yeah. Naturally, it's a platforming game, or basically any game in general. You're going to be able to jump. I feel like Mike on the trampoline in Monsters... Not the trampoline. Mike jumping on Boo's bed in Monsters, Inc. Doing, doing, doing. Looking good. Now, when faced with a less than cooperative foe, put your abdomen into it. If you hit your jump button twice, you'll see what I'm talking about. So, yeah, kind of like how Mario has the ground pound, Flick has the abdomen 
attack, but I'm going to refer to it as the butt bounce. If you press jump while you're in the middle of a jump, you will do a butt bounce, which, if you do it on top of an enemy, is basically a guaranteed one-hit KO, which is nice, especially since there's some enemies that aren't very cooperative when dealing with them via berries, because some of them are have a lot of defense, and your berries will just bounce off them. So keep that in mind. It can be a useful attack. Click. The world around you is alive. From the time I was a pupa, I found useful seeds peppered throughout the land. If you unlock their mysteries, they will help you complete your journey. You can grab onto a seed by pushing the throw button. Drop it by hitting the throw button again. So this is kind of like the main, I'll say, gimmick of the Bugs Life action game, something that differ makes it different from other 3D platformers. It's these seeds here. So seeds are very important to the game. They basically allow you to grow a bunch of different stuff, which can help you out, uh, help you navigate the terrain, and help you defeat enemies, etc., etc. And you can pick them up and carry them around. So if you press the throw berry button when you're next to one, you can pick it up and carry it around. And if you press the fire a berry button again, you will drop it. Pretty simple. But it's very important to know. So once we drop it three times... This seed is embedded in the soil, but you can still grab it. When you're ready, you can crack open a seed by using the trusty bounce. So that was a seed that could just be carried around. This one, you can see there are stones around the outside of it. This means we can't pick it up. If we try picking it up, we can't lift it out of the ground, and Flick will start to do some yoga poses. Nice handstand, Flick. Oh, yeah. But the real thing, the real nice thing about seeds is you get to, uh, if you jump on top of them, they'll crack open and they will grow into a plant. So as you can see in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, there's a mushroom. That indicates what type of plant we can grow. So right now, the only plant we can grow is a mushroom. So if we jump on top of the seed, we grow if a mushroom. If you want to grow something new, simply pick up the plant. You dispose of it with the throw button. So mushrooms aren't amazing, but they are useful. As you can see, it basically makes a platform for us. And if we jump on top of it, it'll automatically bounce us up and down. So this is useful for getting to out of re uh, reach places that you can't reach with your normal jump. And you'll start with the mushroom plant on every single level. So that's nice. And if you want to grow something else, you can pick it up using the fire button, and then you can just toss it. Boom. Jiminy Cricket. I haven't seen a token that color in years. Very valuable, these tokens. They allow you to grow different plants. You see... The more tokens you find, the more possibilities you open up. Go on, pick up the token. So this is where the seeds get more interesting. So you always start a level with the ability to grow mushrooms. In order to grow different plants, you need to pick up these tokens. So for example, this is a green token. So if we pick it up, we're going to learn the ability to grow a specific green plant. So if we pick it up, you can see a new icon appear. If you find a seed, you can change its color by pressing your seed color button. So now we have the ability to grow mushrooms, and we have the ability to grow small leaf plants, as you can see in the lower right-hand screen. So if you want to grow a seed of a different color, so as you can see, the mushroom is orange, whereas the leaf plant is green, you're going to have to push the change color button, which for me is C. Boom. Now, crack open the seed, Flick. Oh, that's it. Okay, yeah. And now if we jump on top, instead of growing a mushroom, we grow a leaf you platform. You need to find another green token before you can reach the top. And I'll be honest, the leaf platform and the mushroom are essentially the exact same thing. They provide a platform for you to jump on and jump off of. The only difference is the mushroom forces you to bounce as long as you're on it, whereas this one you can move around and then jump at your leisure. One other thing that he's not going to teach us, uh, if you press the kick button, you can do a little kick. Uh. This is Flick's uh, impression of dancing. I think the kick button can technically be used to hit enemies... But it is never worth it because it has like no range and the butt bounce is better and the berry throw is probably better as well. On top of that, you can also like lock the camera in place. So I'm using that with the shift button so it won't be like constantly be trying to move behind flick. And you can also use this in order to just kind of look around. 
<laughs> but Flick still does like a shuffle dance while you're doing this. That's fantastic. And the five stands for the amount of lives we have. Anyhow, there's another green token over here. So we're about to pick up a second token of the same color and watch what happens to the leaf plant in the lower right hand uh, corner of the screen. It grew taller. First, you can grow your standard bouncing mushroom. Find the next seed and color it green. Crack that green seed open. So now what that essentially did is that upgraded our green plant ability. So here, let's let's get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. So now if we grow a green plant, it's going to grow a leaf platform that is taller than it was before. So for example, let's change this to green and we jump on top of it. And there is a now a tall leaf platform, which means when we get on top of it, we can explore uh, areas that are even farther out of reach. The problem with this platform, though, is we can't jump on it with a single jump. We're going to need another way to get on. We're going to need to find a way to get height in order to get on there. And that's where the regular mushroom is going to come in handy. We can jump on this and grow it into a mushroom. Well done. Now, reach that ledge by using the mushroom to get to the leaf and onto the ledge. This is essentially the first roadblock that pe many young people will encounter when playing the game. You have to, as he said, jump on the mushroom, which the mushroom alone is not enough to make you go up to the top. You're going to have to bounce up to this leaf platform and then jump from the leaf platform up to the top. And it's actually a fairly precise jump. But no problem. Click. Our sustenance comes from the grain. Collect 50 pieces and gain full health. Spell Flick to gain a new life. Secrets about our world can be unlocked by eliminating all the enemies, collecting all the grain, and spelling out your name. Alright then, a lot of information there. So, as you can see, you may have seen, now there are, there's an enemy down there, that's a spider. There are enemies that appear after you reach the top, which is fun. Um, going back to the leaf platform, so once we got the second token, we now have the ability to grow a taller leaf. You might be asking, well, what if you want the shorter leaf? Can you grow that? And the answer is yes, you can, but for some reason you can't do it in the training mode. For some reason the training mode locks the ability to go back to previous plants that you've unlocked. So I'll get more into that in on the first real level of the game. Now going over the requirements for 100%. To get 100%, you need to get all of the movie clips. Now, you get a movie clip at the start of pretty much every... Actually, the start of every real level, you'll get a movie clip. You'll also get an additional movie clip if you get 100% on the level. To 100% a level, you need to collect all 50 pieces of grain. So as you can see, these um, very, very pixely pieces of grain are on the screen. There are 50 of these on each level. If you collect all 50, you'll get a bronze grain token and that'll fill your HP up completely. There are also four letters, uh, F, L, I, and K, which spell Flick. If you collect all four of those, you'll get the Silver Flick token and get an extra life. And then also, uh, there are enemies on every level. Now, the way the Bugs Life action game works is if you destroy an enemy, it will respawn very quickly, like incredibly quickly. However, on every level, there is a way to permanently destroy enemies. Sometimes more than one way to permanently destroy enemies. If you can permanently destroy every enemy on a level, you'll get the gold enemy token. If you get all three of the tokens, the, uh, the grain token, the flick token, and the enemy token, you get 100% on the level. So, putting this into practice. Picking up the grain. There's the F right here. Thankfully, it's all just in a giant line on the first level, which is pretty nice. And here, we have our first berry power-up. Super berry! I'll let you in on a secret flick. Shall I? A blueberry is twice as effective as a red berry. A little red berry won't even wrinkle the exoskeleton of a grasshopper. Some berries, like the greens and the purples, home in on your foes. But the best berry of all is the gold. Find the elusive gold berry, and your enemies will trouble you no further. Yeah, so he's basically describing the different berries. So the red berry that you start with is very weak, and there are lots of enemies in the game that won't even take damage from the red berry. The blueberry is the super berry. It deals twice as much damage as the red berry, and it will damage every enemy in the game. So that's pretty great. Now, as you can see here, once we pick up the super berry, these uh, pink slash purple tokens appear. I'm going to call them purple tokens because, well, 
they're purple. If we pick one up, we get a new plant. The purple plants uh, specialize in something different. So each different plant color specializes in something different. So the orange tokens, which are like the mushroom, and you can upgrade the mushroom, basically emphasize uh, allowing you to reach high places or far places. The green tokens allow you to grow leaves, which essentially create platforms for you. And then these tokens here are the purple tokens. They grow berry power-ups for you. So the first purple token you get, you can grow super berries. So you can create a uh, seed, ch change it purple, crack it open, and it'll give you a single super berry. It's all right if you can't find the super berry, but the real joy is when you can find all four of the purple tokens. So we just spelled flick, so we get the silver flick token that flies away, and we got an extra life. Pick up the last pieces of grain, we got the bronze grain token, and that leaf that appeared in the upper right corner for a second, that's our health. And if you have any taken any damage at all when you get all the pieces of grain, then it will refill it back to full. If we get the second... Actually, yeah, second token, boom! As you can see, there's now a green berry icon. So that's pretty cool. So right here, we've got these ants. As long as you have the super berry, you can kill them in one hit. But the red berry... Yeah, as you can see, he spawned... He respawned... Insanely quickly. But as I was saying, the red berry... Will take two hits to kill these guys. Get rid of that. If we change it to purple... There's a green berry here. Homing berry, yeah! This is the homing berry. I believe it has the exact same power that the super berry has, but the difference here is... These oh, actually legitimately home in on enemies. Whereas the super berry and the red berry have like a slight home, these are a full on home. If you throw it, it's oh, gonna yeah. hit. Yeah. And this upgrades it to a purple berry. Well, hot dog, Pluto. Let's see what this is all about. That's a homing berry. So whenever he picked this up, I always thought he said, THAT'S A HOMING BERRY! No, this is the Mega Homing Berry. It's just like the green, regular Homing Berry, except it's more powerful. Bye -bye, buggy. It's very nice. And honestly, if you don't care about 100%ing it, the, the game, this is probably the one you're going to want, just because you can throw it willy-nilly and it'll hit its target. If you're trying to get 100%, though, you want... This one. This is the Gold Berry. And you're about to see this one in action. Gold Berry! I can do some damage with this. So picking up the gold berry will cause this counter to appear on the bottom of the screen. You can see zero out of four, followed by the little spinning honey icon. If you permanently destroy enemies, they turn into honey? Apparently? I don't really understand it. But the, the uh, number on the right symbolizes the number of enemies that exist on the level. The number on the left exists the number of enemies you've permanently destroyed. So once you get the golden berry, it's a bit of a downgrade. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so I did, wasn't trying to hit that enemy there, but it hit anyways. So you can see I hit the enemy with the gold berry. It died in one hit, and it turned into honey, which spun off and flew off the level. And now I've, it says one out of four, so I've permanently destroyed one out of the four enemies on the level. Now, the gold berry is a bit of a downgrade almost from the homing berries because it no longer has the super home effect. However, it does have the slight homing effect that the red and blue berries have. So that's pretty good, and the fact that it's super powerful, it can destroy any enemy in the game, provided it's not a boss, in one or two hits. So these enemies will die in one hit. Nice one. Also, I don't think I've shown this off. Yeah! You can butt bounce the enemies, but they're going to come back. Let's see if I can kick the enemies. Oh, nope, kicking the enemies... Oh, kicking the enemies does damage them, but it is the weakest attack in the game. It actually deals less damage than the red berry. So once we destroy the final enemy of the Golden Berry... You can see that gold X token appears. That refers to the enemy token or the honey token. And we now have 100% on this level, which is pretty awesome. And as you can see, if you look at Mr. Soil's sign, he is saying we need to go to the exit. So that's the goal of litter. Well, that's the goal of basically every level, is there will be an exit, find the exit, reach the end, boom, you beat the level. So if you're not trying to get 100%, this game is actually pretty darn easy. There are only a couple of tricky levels, and you'll know you're approaching the exit based on that little flag there with the leaf on top, which is supposed to be green. Why is that gray? That's a mystery. Anyhow. Oh, yeah! Get used to hearing Flick say, oh, yeah, a lot in this game. Never too much grain. F-L-I-K spells Flick. That's me. Well, 
All right. We got 50 pieces of grain, we spelled flick, and we got four, all four pieces of honey on the level. Sweet. Oh, yeah. And wow, that <laughs> that is a great still image of Tuck and Roll. Wow, <laughs> I forgot about all the low-res still images in the game. So here's a funny thing. You see my name is here. Fun fact, I recorded the first two episodes of this Let's Play, and for some reason my mic quality was incredibly low. It sounded like I was talking through a tin can. A lesser Let's Player would have just uh, said, oh well, that those two episodes are going to have lower audio quality, and not done anything about it. But I decided to re-record those two episodes. Then again, that's not saying a lot, because there are no lesser Let's Players than I. Anyhow, we're going to save, over, and we're going to do an empty slot. We're going to say... Already won. Oh, that's why it didn't save my control scheme, I bet. My control scheme, I think, is tied to my folder. And it resets when you uh, start a new folder. Anyhow, now you can see on training, we've got all three tokens in the upper right corner. That shows you have 100% of the level. Now, the training level doesn't give you any movie clips, unfortunately. If we go here... The only movie clip we actually have... Oh, no! Bugs.exe has encountered a problem and needs to close. Apparently, we can't go back and view our old mo movie clips. Oh, that? I've ne I do not know that. This is a video to try. Well, that's a good way to end the video, I suppose. <laughs> we won't be able to check out our movie clips, but that's okay, because I know where they all are. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We're going to the first real level of the Let's Play, The Ant Hill, which actually has music and will be a lot more interesting. I hope you guys at least stick around for a little bit for this Let's Play, because hopefully it'll be entertaining, even if it's just me like, oh my gosh, this game has not aged well at all. Hopefully it'll be entertaining. If not, I understand. There are, I think... Yeah, there are 15 levels in the game, and then the training level. So I think this will be a 16-video Let's Play. Anyhow, look forward to that, uh, the future videos. Hope to see you there. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. I'm not sending Microsoft an error report about a video game from, like, 20 years ago that isn't even in circulation anymore, running on an operating system that Windows no longer supports.